How's it going guys? It's K Cars and in today's video I wanted to give you guys a long-term review on the lift kit on my 2001 Jeep Cherokee XJ. I'm also going to talk specifically about which exact lift kit that I have. Then we're also going to get out and I'm going to show you guys the components of the lift kit and kind of show you how it looks on the Jeep. And then at the end of the video I'm also going to include a slideshow of a bunch of pictures of my Jeep so you guys can get a good look of the stance and kind of how it looks all together. So let's go ahead and get started with the overall review. So to start off, I have the Rusty's 3-inch advanced lift kit. And of course, I will go through everything that was included in that. So I got the lift kit installed about a year and a half ago. And ever since then, it's been riding extremely great. I have pretty much zero complaints when it comes to the actual lift kit. Now, whenever I picked the Jeep up from the shop that actually did the installation, you know, I kind of had second thoughts about if I actually liked it or not. Because for some reason, I was so used to it being stock and I just love the stock look that it kind of took me a while to actually grow on the look of a lifted XJ. So like I said, I was kind of second guessing my decision of actually getting a three inch lift for my Cherokee that was pretty much completely stock whenever I actually got it. But to be honest, the same day that I picked the Jeep up from the shop, I actually went and gave it a thorough wash and kind of cleaned it all up to kind of see how it would look, you know, all cleaned up and all shined up and everything. And I have to say right away, I absolutely loved the look. The way that the tires kind of poke out of the body, I think it's just the perfect amount of backspacing that I got. And of course, you know, the lifted look definitely makes it look a whole lot more aggressive, a whole lot, you know, just more like a Jeep, more like an off-road vehicle that it is. So of course, I really do like the look of it right now, of especially after having it on the Jeep for a year and a half, like I mentioned. I really, to be honest, don't even have any kind of complaints when it comes to the actual lift kit. So I wanted to get out here and show you guys what my Jeep currently looks like with the three inch lift kit. So of course, let me show you guys the tire poke that I was just talking about in there. These wheels are Pro Comp Series 51, 15 by eight with a 3.75 backspacing. So once again, you guys can see what that poke looks like right there. I think it's just the right amount. I'm very happy with how they look and the whole stance of the Jeep as well. Now, these are actually gloss black wheels with the center caps here from Pro Comp as well. And the tires are also from Pro Comp. These are the Extreme MT2 Mud Terrain tires, and they are 31 by 10 and a half inches. So there you can see the very aggressive tread with the Mud Terrain tires. And yeah, I really do think that a three inch lift with 31 inch tires is the perfect look for an XJ. I'm giving you guys a quick side view here. Once again, I think it looks great. On the back view right here, of course looks amazing. Got that poke right there as well. So yeah, I mean, overall, that's kind of what the Jeep looks like. And like I said, I will also include a whole bunch of pictures of my Jeep in different types of environments so you guys can get a better look of what this thing actually looks like. Now, one of the most common supporting modifications with a lift kit on an XJ is a slip yoke eliminator or a transfer case drop kit. So if you guys aren't sure what that is, I have a whole video going over how a slip yoke eliminator actually works because I actually do have one installed on my Jeep Cherokee XJ here as well. And what happens is basically every XJ is different. So it's not like a certain amount of lift requires a slip yoke eliminator or a transfer case drop. It kind of depends on, you know, just your own Jeep. So like I said, they're all different. And mine actually did, you know, it wasn't absolutely necessary for me to get a slip yoke eliminator. But basically the way that you would know if you need one or not is if you have driveline vibrations when driving. So for me specifically, whenever I was driving and I let off the gas, that's whenever I heard and felt those driveline vibrations from my Jeep here. So that's how I knew that I either needed to get the transfer case dropped and most commonly it's dropped by about an inch or I could go the you know correct way and actually get a slip yoke eliminator, which is what I decided to do in the end. Whenever I got the Jeep, I did talk to the mechanic that actually installed it for me. And I asked him, you know, originally I wanted to just get a transfer case drop kit installed simultaneously along with the lift kit. So he did recommend that I wait until I actually get the lift kit installed to determine if I actually need a slip yoke eliminator or a transfer case drop at all. So I went ahead and, you know, obviously took his recommendation, got the lift kit installed and I drove it around for a few months, I would say. And I kind of decided on my own that I want to go ahead and just do it the right way and get the slip yoke eliminator. And like I said, it really wasn't absolutely necessary for me to get that slip yoke eliminator because the vibrations were very minimal. And like I said, it only happened whenever I took my foot off the gas. But I decided to go ahead and just get that slip yoke eliminator either way because, you know, vibrations are, you know, never really a good thing for a vehicle because over time they can loosen certain things up and kind of, you know, mess up a few things in the vehicle. So I just wanted to make sure that I was doing everything right because, 
like I said, this is a preservation project and you know, I'm never really planning on getting rid of this Jeep. So got the lift kit installed, got the slip deck eliminator. And you know, like I said, absolutely no issues with either one. And I'm very happy with the results a year and a half later. So let's go ahead and specifically talk about which lift kit I have installed. So like I mentioned, I do have the Rusty's Off-Road three inch advanced lift kit on my Jeep Cherokee XJ. And of course I did pull up the page on my phone here so I can give you guys all the information here. So if you guys are wondering, the part number for this lift kit is RK300A xj rx1 fix ub2 and that's on the rusty's offroad.com website so the reason i went with the rusty's offroad advanced kit is because it was the most complete kit that i found out of any of the companies that i searched for so pretty much it came with everything that i needed and a little bit more now i figured that with a three inch lift i would have to go ahead and just get extended brake lines which a lot of those kits actually did not include those so i wanted to get the rusty's kit I believe it was the only kit that I found that actually included those. It also had a bunch of other kind of supporting parts as well, plus a few additional extra parts that I decided to add on to. So the Rusty's three inch advanced lift kit comes standard with the front coil springs, rear leaf springs, front hydro performance shocks, rear hydro performance shocks, upper control arms, lower control arms, adjustable front track bar, extended brake lines and u-bolts now there also are a few other additional options which i will show you guys which ones i actually chose so i'm going to read off all the additional options you can get with this lift kit that i'm going to tell you guys which ones i actually got so you can get a steering stabilizer adjustable sway bar quick disconnects tie rod steering system or a transfer case drop kit now out of all those options i decided to get the steering stabilizer and the adjustable front sway bar quick disconnects. The reason I went with those two additional options on top of everything that came standard was because I wanted to get a brand new steering stabilizer because I was still running the stock one that came on this Jeep, you know, 21 years ago. And it was recommended that I do get that replaced either way. So I went ahead and got that. Then I also did get the front adjustable sway bar quick disconnects. Now, to be honest, I didn't really get them for the quick disconnect feature. I mainly got them for the adjustability of the length because with the sway bar in the front, I wanted to make sure that they were the correct length for, you know, to accommodate the height difference that I was getting with the lift kit. So that's the reason that I got those parts. And I did notice that whenever I got this lift kit a year and a half ago, it didn't actually have the option for the tie rod upgraded steering system. That's definitely something that I have been considering doing as kind of like an upgrade for the Jeep now. After a year and a half, I really haven't noticed a need for it. But I think it's a pretty common thing to upgrade after getting a lift kit on an XJ. Now, altogether, the parts alone were around $1,000 for the complete lift kit that I got with all the additional parts. So, you know, some can say that is a lot of money for a lift kit. And, you know, I definitely agree. But I didn't want to go the cheap route and just get like any old lift kit without doing any kind of research. You know, I did a bunch of research and kind of concluded that this Rusty's advanced lift kit was kind of the best way that I could go and, you know, kind of like the right way, in my opinion, in my research that I did. Now, on the Rusty's off-road website, on the same page as the lift kit, they do have a note at the bottom that says, while the majority of the Cherokees that use our three inch lift kit never have a problem, we will occasionally run across one that develops a slight driveline vibration once the kit is installed. This is easily solved by adding our transfer case drop kit. So they do recommend their transfer case drop kit if you do develop driveline vibrations. In my experience, I think the right way to do is just get a slip yoke eliminator, which brings me to my next subject. So for the slip yoke eliminator and CV drive shaft, I actually ended up going with a combo deal that is on the Rusty's off-road website as well. So since I have the NP231 transfer case, I got the advanced adapters NP231 slip yoke eliminator, and the combo deal actually comes with a Tom Wood 1310 series CV drive shaft. So that is all a kind of like a combo kit on the Rusty's off-road website that they offer. And altogether for parts, that one is $595. So definitely a lot more expensive than just a simple transfer case drop kit. But, you know, I will say, and I would imagine a lot of people also recommend that 
going with the slip vehicle eliminator is probably just the most correct way to do it instead of just dropping the transfer case by an inch. So guys, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, there really isn't any way to tell before you actually install the lift kit if you are going to need a slip vehicle eliminator or not. And pretty much every X-ray is different. So you pretty much have to drive the Jeep after getting it lifted and kind of just feel it out to see if it needs a slip vehicle eliminator or not. And like I mentioned, mine just had very minimal vibrations whenever I let off the gas probably around like 40 to 50 miles an hour. So that's kind of the way that I determined that I wanted to get a slip yoke eliminator. And it wasn't absolutely necessary for me to get it, but I figured even though slight vibrations could cause problems down the road that I just wanted to eliminate and just, you know, get it all done correctly. And looking back at it, if I had to do it all over again, I would literally not change a single thing. I've had zero issues with the lift kit, zero issues with the slip eliminator. The only kind of issue that we did run into was with the drive shaft. And that was just because of incorrect measurements. So whenever you actually want to place an order for the drive shaft, they tell you to take a measurement from the yoke to yoke. Then they will actually send you a custom drive shaft based on those measurements to actually match that length. So the problem that we ran into with that was that we actually did measure from yoke to yoke, but we measured it while the slip yoke was still in there. So everything was stock. We didn't have the fixed yoke in there yet. So the measurements should be taken with the fixed yoke installed and not the slip yoke. That's kind of where we messed up. Now, the mechanic that actually did the install he kind of was under the assumption that Rusty's would be able to figure out the correct length just by, you know, providing the length from yoke to yoke when it's completely stock with the slip yoke still installed. So there might have been a little bit of a miscommunication there, but he got it all taken care of. You know, the only thing that we had to do was kind of extend the drive shaft that we did get because it was just a little bit too short. And of course, he made it right by not charging me anything for that. So it was all good in the end. No issues there. I want to get out here and show you guys the different components of my lift kit here. So let's start off with the front here. I can show you guys what this looks like. So we can start off by talking about the coil springs right there. So you can see those right there. Obviously, same thing on both sides. And then right here, you can also see the adjustable sway bar quick disconnects. There you can see the quick disconnect feature right there. So once again, obviously same thing on both sides. And then right over here, you can see the steering stabilizer. That was an additional option. And then the adjustable track bar is right over here. So everything looks very good right there. And we can move to the side here, show you guys what the shocks look like. So there's the shock. And then right here is also the extended brake lines that I mentioned. So all that is of course included standard with the advanced lift kit. Then right here I can show you guys the lower control arm. And of course the upper control arm it is going to be right over here. You guys can see that right there. So there's all the components in the front. Of course haven't had any issues with this thing whatsoever. Then moving on to the rear. We can start off here by looking at the leaf springs right there. So this one, of course, is a full leaf spring. So I did not want to get the add a leaf kit. So the advanced lift kit came standard with the full leaf spring right there. And then, of course, in the rear, we also do have the shocks. So one right there, the other on the passenger side right there as well, as well as the extended brake lines in the rear as well. And then when it comes to the slip yoke eliminator and the CV drive shaft, of course, like I mentioned, I do have the NP231 transfer case. So the slip vehicle eliminator is specific for the NP231. There you can see that, it's the fixed yoke right there. And right here is the CV drive shaft. There you can see the slipping point for the drive shaft. So basically what this does is it takes the slippage from the actual uh, yoke and it transfers it for it to slip on the actual drive shaft right there. And if you guys are interested in learning more details of how a slip vehicle eliminator actually works, I do have a specific video going over the in-depth process of how a slip vehicle eliminator does work and actually eliminates those driveline vibrations. So I'm going to link that video down below in the description. So make sure to check that out for a detailed video of how a slip vehicle eliminator works. Now, the only comment that I could make when it comes to the actual drivability with the lift kit is that it does make it a little bit more stiff of a ride, which I'm pretty sure every lift kit does that. So it's really not a complaint at all, just kind of something that I've noticed and an observation that I've made after the Jeep got lifted. So, you know, really not an issue there at all. So that could have just been caused by the sagging stock suspension. I might have just been used to how soft the stock suspension was that whenever I got this thing lifted, got all the suspension parts replaced, 
I just wasn't used to or wasn't really prepared for how stiff the new suspension was going to be. So as you guys know, the old Cherokees are known for having those sagging leaf springs in the back. So it was definitely a very good upgrade to get all the suspension parts replaced. And of course, looks very good lifted as well. So right here, I wanted to show you guys how this thing actually handles speed bumps. Yeah, so I mean, like you can see right there, it's probably not going to show up too well on camera, but you know, it is a little bit stiff. So we have a few more speed bumps coming up here ahead that I can kind of go over and let you guys kind of get a good look at how the Jeep handles them. So we got one right over here. Yeah, so that one wasn't really too bad, but we have another one coming up here. Yeah, so you guys probably aren't really going to be able to tell too well just from a video of how like stiff the suspension is but this one coming up here is pretty rough so you guys can get a another look at how the jeep handles it definitely pretty stiff in the back especially yeah so honestly it's really not too bad i've gotten used to it and it's really not a complaint at all it's just an observation like i mentioned so i would say the rear suspension is just a little bit more stiff than the front but yeah that's pretty much it so like i mentioned nothing negative just an observation so guys like i mentioned over the past year and a half i haven't had any kind of issues with the lift kit or the slip pick eliminator on my jeep cherokee xj here i will put links to everything down in the description below so you guys can check that out if you want and if you guys have any questions or comments make sure to drop those down in the comment section below if you guys have any video suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future also drop those down in the comment section below and if you guys like this video or found it entertaining make sure to like comment and subscribe and as always thanks for watching like i mentioned i will also be including a slideshow of pictures so you guys can get a better look at how my jeep cherokee x-ray looks and a good view of the stance so definitely make sure to stick around if you don't want to miss that